This is a Lino G. This Blungeon. A modified Lino jeans that took me roughly eight months to complete. This is, without a doubt, the most ambitious model that I've ever made. Let's talk about it. This is about it. We, you don't know. Oh, Edward. The idea for this model came as I was thinking of what custom to make next. Thomas and James were the only models Lino made, which limited what I could do. I can sort of see why these were the only models to make. Large scale models are expensive to produce and just oh, yeah. expensive to sell. What if Lino continued the range and produced more characters? Like, say, Edward. Edward does look similar to James, and they could probably recycle parts to make him. So, I decided I would make a D scale model First of Edward using so the body hard. of a Lino James. Oh, the goal Edward, being to make Edward look like an authentic Lino model. The project began Edward. in September, and I bought my third Lino James. I usually try to buy damaged models, as they're typically cheaper, and I don't feel as bad about modifying them. But at the time I was searching, this light okay. used James was the cheapest one I could find. It came in its original packaging along with the manual in James' face mask. Yeah. While I wasn't thrilled to be modifying the model in such good condition, at least it came with some good stuff. Yeah. To turn James into Edward, there were several things I needed to do. I had to remove the front drive wheel and splash it, push back and extend the bogey, shorten the side rods, move his gums, and fix the cab windows, cab all before painting him blue and adding his number two. The first thing I did was work on giving him his 440 wheel arrangement. The wheels were removed from the chassis along with the pickups. With the front drive wheel gone, I had to move the front pickup to the second wheel. I figured out where they would go, and I used my Dremel to cut holes in the chassis and glue them in place. I then had to cut like away the front half of the chassis around. to make room for the extended bogey. This was a bit tricky, as I'd never cut or sanded this much material before. It took some time, but I eventually got the chassis just right. Using silicone rubber, I made a mold of the bogey and cast it no with plastic. I drilled out holes and slid in spare wheels before gluing it to the original bogey. Wheels. I also molded and cast one of the side rods. The middle section was removed and the two ends joined together. I then made a new mold so I could cast a short side rod as one piece. I watched the other Tom's wheels so I could swap them out with James's. I needed to move these plastic tabs on a new set of wheels, so I used the vise to pry the wheels apart and slip them on. I then reassembled the chassis and gave it a run on the tracks to ensure that the pickups were working. With the drive wheel secure, I fixed the side rods and attached the bogey. A bit of styrene was used to cover the hole in the front of the chassis, and for the most part, it was finished. I can now move on to modifying the body. The first thing I did was cut off the front splashers. Cut off the splashers. Cut off the splashers. holes in the model that I needed to fill. I cut off strips of styrene and used them to cover the inside of the holes. Then, using the plastic line, I filled in the space. After hardening, it was sanded down till it was flush. The dome was removed and screwed to a piece of styrene. I drilled out a new hole big enough for the dome to fit through, then glued the styrene and dome in place. The plenty place. was used to fill in seam lines and to cover the original hole for the dome. I decided to sand down the lining on the boiler, as the amount that the Edward has is different from James. I used the same process for the cab as I did yeah, for the boiler. Please. I put styrene inside the cab, coated it with putty, and sanded it down. I then marked out where the windows would be and cut them out. I would use more putty and some straight plastic to make the divide in the window. I also used strips of styrene to correct this slope into an angle. One upside to buying this model is that it came with James's cab roof, an accessory I've been missing for a while. With this, I can now call my Lionel James 100% complete. But first, I need to make copies for Edward and our ordinance James. So I made a mold and cast duplicates of the roof. I sanded down the whistle for Edward as he sits above his boiler instead of his cab. To finish out the body modification, I cast the slope piece to fit under the smoke box just like Edwards. With all that the done, it was time to paint. A lot of miscellaneous stuff like the roof and wheels I had painted early on. I moved the body and the tender outside, primed them with gray, and then mounted them on top. I actually had to sand off all the paint and do everything over again. This was the first time I had used primer, and I didn't let it dry long enough before applying the second coat, resulting in a cracked pattern. The paint job does look a little rough in some spots, but it's much better than what it was. After they dried, I took out the paint sharp and began applying like the line detail. For Edward's number two, I took a picture of Edward into Inkscape and traced out the number. Adjustments were made in Photoshop, and it was then printed on every label. I painted the back of the label so the color could be clearly seen. The label was then applied to the tender. It's a little sloppy, but it works. It was around this time that I decided to properly secure the bogey. Up till now, the bogey was held in place with a plastic rod and a push pin. This worked well for testing, however, the bogey would fall off whenever the chassis was picked up. So I replaced it with a metal screw that would fit into a nut to lose the model. Now the only thing left to do was swap out James' face. Right from the beginning, I was very adamant about changing the face, as otherwise it would just be James painted blue. However, because there are no models of Edward and G-Skill to pull the face from, this meant I had to create a custom face from scratch. And because I wanted to stay true to the other line of model, I also had to make the face compatible with the eye mechanism. There was much trial and error while making the face. I would sculpt the face out of clay, make a mold, and then cast it. I repeat this process for finding the face with each sculpt. I wanted to mimic the low detail of the other line of models, so I used the Tommy Edward's face as a basis. Once I finally got a face I was happy with, it was painted up and then placed on the smoke box. The model was now fully complete. Full complete. Well done! We made Sister Edward from Tony's Friends. This one is hot. The only inconsistency with the model is that it had James' fireballs. 
Unfortunately, there was no way I could change that without creating an entirely new piece. So, it's not exactly Edward's shape, but it's close enough. Yeah. While Edward may be complete, we're not finished. Both Thomas and James came with a set of rolling stock. Thomas got Annie and Clarabelle, and James got two trucks with trucks. To make Edward feel truly complete, I decided that he needed some rolling stock as well. No. I took inspiration from Edward's Tommy model yet again. I already had a spare Tomsom truck lying around, so I could to convert a coach into a great western van. Using more model clay, I filled in all the windows and crevices on the coach and sanded everything as fresh as I could get it. The same was done to the roof. I took my saw and cut horizontal lines to mimic the place on the van. I cut frames and doors out of styrene and glued it in places in plastic blow. The van was then painted gray. After that, I filled the face out of clay, cast it in plastic, and painted it. The face was then glued to the front of the van. So not only do I have a new custom model, but custom rolling stock as well. I've spent the past eight months putting this together, and I'm finally glad that it's complete. Edward is yet another worthy addition to my growing collection. I have no idea what my next custom will be. I've thrown around the idea of making Oliver using comics, but I don't know. Any other character I make will likely require 3D printed parts, so we'll see what happens with that. Anyway, this is where I'll end the video for today. I hope you guys enjoy it, and I thank you for watching. Alright guys, bye.